right, well, tis the season to be jolly and apparently fight with your significant other. Yeah, studies have shown that 40% of couples argue during the holiday season more than any other time of the year, and all that tension could lead to divorce. Yeah, and speaking of divorce, lawyers mm -hmm. report a spike in divorce filings after the holidays, with some people calling January Divorce Month. But your seasonal spat doesn't have to end in Splitsville. Yeah, Dennis Vetrano is a divorce and family law attorney. He joins us now with tips on how to navigate this holiday season, which of course can be stressful. Welcome to the show. Good to, have, good to be here. All right. All right, so what are some reasons uh, divorces spike after the holidays? Well, I think you always have those, you know, general reasons, abuse, addiction, uh, affairs, those are things you're gonna have all the, t all the time, but I think, you know, around the holidays, it's the time when people start wanting to improve their lives, right? Mm -hmm. okay. They go on diets, they do their New Year's resolutions. New beginnings. Right, <laughs> they, want, they want to improve their fitness, so at that same time, people start thinking, hey, divorce may be the way that I improve my life. Oof. Okay, so many couples argue. So how do you go from taking an argument, keeping it just an argument, and preventing it from turning into something like divorce? And that's a good question. And I think with the arguments, think about what an argument is, right? It's an exchange of ideas, typically opposing views, but in a heated sort of way. If we could just take the emotions out of it, Simply take it for what it is. Mm -hmm. It's an exchange of ideas. So first you want to listen to what your partner has to say, hear out their concerns, and then exchange your viewpoints in a way that it's a discussion and not an argument. Got it. Okay, so if one part of the couple knows that they want to file for divorce, should they wait for a better timing? Yeah, that's a really good question. I get that all the time. The thing about that is there's two pieces to that. There's the legal and there's the practical. Mm -hmm. I think the legal is, you know, it's money, it's income, it's taxes, it's stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I think you've got to focus on the practical. The practical is if you can figure out how and when you're going to tell your kids about the divorce, can you do the day-to-day -day parenting, who's going to take care of the household bills. I think if you can sort out the practical, it's probably better off to wait until after the holidays. Mm -hmm. Because one of the worst things you can do is go through the divorce process when your emotions are high. And the emotions are no higher than any other time in the year than around the holidays. Okay, speaking of the children, for a lot of families, this may be their first holiday season after a divorce. So how do you get through this with their children? Yeah, I mean, I think there's three things there. I think the first thing, the most important thing, is understand that after the holidays, as you go through the process, it's going to be really emotional and difficult mm -hmm. for yourself. So you have to try to take me time, lean on, lean on your support, your mm -hmm. counselors, your family, your friends. And insofar as the kids are concerned, you really want to listen. I think through the divorce process, I think parents, I mean, people going through the process don't listen to their kids enough. So listen to the things that they want to see happen. Do the simple things. Plan activities that engage them. Go for a hike, do a board game, do a puzzle. These are the things that get the kids involved and keep you and your kids' minds off the divorce process. Okay, so, so would it send the wrong message of the parents spent the holidays together? I think the most important thing for kids, and it's pretty pure, is they just want to see mom and dad get along. Mm. And whether that's as part of an intact family or a split family, that's all they want to see. So if you can do joint holidays in a peaceful way that's enjoyable, do it. And if you can't, do the best you can getting through it as a split family. Well, okay. like the saying goes, can we all just get along? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Basic of that. Absolutely. Simple as that. All right. right. Well, Dennis, thank you so much for joining us today. Good to be here. Thanks so much. All right. And if you need help navigating your divorce, Dennis has a podcast with loads of useful tips. Just check out the DRV Law Show.